Anyway, today I wanted to talk about light and how it shapes life and really how it shapes your brain. Last couple of days, I've had a number of people who I've been talking to, and I've explained to them that 44% approximately of their brain is actually wired into their eye, and they were shocked by this. Now, to give you some scale, right, the, uh, the occipital lobes are the lobes at the back of the brain that create your camera vision, which is what you think of as your vision, right? But you know that you're getting lots of cues from your visual environment that you're interpreting in other parts of your brain. Like, for example, when you see someone's body language change or shift, you're not interpreting that through your camera vision. You're interpreting it through your emotional processing system. And there's so many complex interactions between different parts of the brain that analyze a simple action like someone adjusting their body language. There's a really great webinar by my colleague, Dr. Jack Cruz, on this topic where he talks about a case where a patient uh, suffered a gunshot wound to the head and it altered their ability or robbed them of the ability to really interpret the world, but they could still make decisions and they could perceive things like a letter and put it through a mail slot, despite the fact that they actually couldn't see it. What I really want you to understand about light and the brain is that it touches pretty much every corner of your brain. And that means that if you're messing up the light or if you're living under fake light, it can cause a cascade of effects through your body that we can't really predict, right? And I was talking to someone today and I said, look, I don't deal with diagnoses because I've found that they're very misleading. It's like a name tag or a label you put on somebody and then you give them medicine for the rest of their life. And in reality, what the brain is trying to do as all parts of your physiology, as all systems within your body are trying to do, they're trying to establish balance with the environment. And they're just doing the best that they can with the resources that you give them. And this is why I'm such a bear on fake light. Because fake light is a signal to your brain that can really confuse it. And to be clear, I use a lot of fake light, right? The photobiomodulation devices that I recommend to people are fake. They have LEDs or, you know, mercury UV bulbs or whatever that are made in some factory that are absolutely not natural. But I'm always trying to mimic nature or augment what nature is already offering people, usually for free in the form of sunlight. And what people really need to understand, though, about light that I haven't talked about today is that it does, it does play on all the other parts of your biochemistry and your anatomy that are not simply made up of, obviously, photonic energy. That means you've got to have the right neurotransmitter, or sorry, the right amino acids, fatty acids, minerals, building blocks of life in order to use light in the proper way. And one of my suspicions is that many people who do not do well with light therapy, for example, their sleep doesn't improve with red light therapy. They, um, you know, develop complications like burns from solar exposure too easily, right? My suspicion is those people do not have the proper nutrition in order to sustain and endure and obviously use to their advantage the photonic energy that they can absorb from their environment, right? This is so critical to brain health because I think that fake light's driving a lot of the neurological and neurodegenerative diseases that people are seeing and that I see every day as a general practitioner, you know, that start in, you know, and really I view this as a continuum of illness that starts in youth and then escalates as people get older. Because one of the things you'll find about people who have Alzheimer's disease, Parkinson's, whatever, they all had illnesses preceding that that were linked to light, like anxiety, depression, issues with allergies, autoimmunity, problems with their metabolism. It all comes back to light. It all gets mediated through the eye and the brain. And that's why some of my most important therapeutic interventions with people are get fake blue and green light out of your life after dark, get natural healthy sunlight exposure without burning, obviously, and eat a diet that's rich in the things that help you assimilate photonic energy, all of which are colorful. How about that? So Thanks, everyone, for watching. Tune in to uh, Truth Over Fear Summit this weekend, which I will be speaking at. Uh, sign up for my newsletter. It's not too late to catch the October newsletter. It's going to come out tonight. As always, thanks for watching. Take care, and you can apply to work with me and find out what you are actually dealing with in terms of the nutrients you need to assimilate photonic energy with you know, comprehensive nutritional lab testing. Thanks, everyone. Take care. Have a good night, and have a good weekend.